shortly about myself. I am a founder of Texels Box. I just founded this startup about a month ago. And basically what I do is uh, I help founders and sales leaders to acquire more customers. And I also am founder of Tech Sales Hookups. We're a community of 450 sales professions, professionals and sales leaders in Dublin. And now I moved to Barcelona and start the group here. So the idea is to become European wide, like monthly events, record them as well and share the knowledge, you know, provide the value. So let me, let me introduce you as well. Um, you have uh, a group of, I checked today, 3,623 members. It's all about cold emailing, sales, uh, how to reach influencers, how to reach people that are hard to reach and in the most effective, most efficient, efficient way. And I believe you you also do it yourself. You basically sell that as a service for other people, right? Yeah. So that's um, either B2B sort of direct mail, cold email, uh, LinkedIn campaigns, um, but also uh, sometimes very specific projects where a company will want and um, want to meet a very specific brand like for instance, someone wanted to get a meeting with BuzzFeed or Spotify or so we can do it sort of uh, uh, based on a criteria. So I want to meet marketing directors at companies like this size or I can we can do it very specific. So if there's someone specific you want to meet, uh, our goal is to get that one person in, uh, to meet with you and um, also do some B2B sort of growth uh, marketing stuff as well. So what was your journey? Tell, tell something about your journey, how you learned it, because those skills are hard to acquire. I believe they're yeah. like super superhero skills. You know, if you can reach for people who are hard to reach, you basically yeah. like. It, well, it was, um, I started a marketing agency and about a year in, all of our word of mouth sales had dried up and uh, I was desperate and I got drunk one night and I wrote the most absurd cold email <laughs> I could. And in the morning, I was still tipsy enough to think it was a good idea to, uh, send that on to very senior marketing people at big brands and to my amazement it worked and I remember one of, one of my favorite responses that I got was succinctly read my colleague forwarded me your spam email and we would like to meet you to discuss opportunities yeah <laughs> <laughs> hilarious sentence <laughs> and, uh, and, and I kept sending it and the more I did the more meetings I would book and I met with Red Bull and Pepsi and Symantec and Hewlett Packard and Cisco and all these you know, so many huge companies. And the more I sent it out, the, the more compliments and sales meetings I would book. And I thought, oh, dear, this is just never going to run out. Like, I can just keep doing this. And I literally didn't change the copy of that email for like three years because I thought like I'd found a magic uh, hack, as it were. And then I realized about five years in, this is actually what I'm best at, is this opening opportunities. And uh, that's when I started Charm Offensive. And... Um, it was only three, for, for years I didn't tell anyone about this, other than obviously sending emails and letters myself to get meetings. Uh, I used to get really nervous when anyone would post, scan one of my letters onto Twitter and say, look, this is the best letter I've ever got. So I'm like, no, no, people will find out. I don't want people to know. And, uh, so I tried to try and guard it as, as close as I could. And then three months ago on a whim, I just thought, I spoke to the guy that, uh, who, Colin, who runs the Cult of Copy, which is another great Facebook group, and uh, I had a call with him. And uh, he said, yeah, I think you've got something unique enough here that you could have a community around it. Yeah. So I started it and it took off. And then sort of, I think it's only about three or four months later and it's gone from zero to over three and a half thousand people. And, uh, and then here we are today. <laughs> so what, who, who, is, who are the people in the community? Because I, I believe this is one of the stronger sales communities on Facebook. Like I didn't do much research, but people post all the time and it's genuine, you know, they really share the knowledge. And I believe it's very hard to achieve because salespeople would be like, oh, that's it, mine. You know, I will not share it with anybody, even my colleague like next to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a big mix of people. So it's everything from uh, sort of experienced salespeople, business development directors, all the way to someone that's just gone freelance in the last month. But it's such a big range and I kind of like that. Um, but there's so many different types of people, but it's all entrepreneurial folks, I would say. Although there are salespeople that work for other people and stuff like that, but it's very entrepreneurial people that want to get the you know new clients or get PR or 
you know, whatever their goals might be. So I, I really like the kind of mix. And there's people from all over the world as well, yeah. which is re really cool. So, so tell, tell me something you learned with the community, because I believe it's a learning, a huge learning for you, right? Yeah. Like going to this number of salespeople, like what is it, what are the key lessons that you did, you learned as a, as a community manager and to the way, how do you engage them? I believe it's very hard yeah. to get. People ask me, uh, uh, someone asked me the other day, like, how have you got to a community this big in four months with this level of engagement? Uh, did you use fate, like looking for like a, a you know a shortcut or a trick that I've used? And I'm like, oh yeah, I obsessively did nothing else but uh, post content on the group and individually reach out to people and help them out. You know, if someone if saw someone struggling or to start with, I just messaged everyone that joined and uh, you know said if you know I can help you with anything, let me know. Uh, if people bought my products or even if they didn't, sometimes I would reach out and I'd help them one to one. And basically, I did that obsessively for four months. Uh, and I did not, absolutely nothing else. And he went, oh, okay. <laughs> There's a great quote from uh, Randy uh, Pausch. Have you ever seen The Last Lecture? By, it's, uh, Randy Pausch is the guy that, um, okay. you should look at him. What's that? Uh, he's got a great quote. Someone said to him, how have you become so successful? What's your secret? And he said, well, that's easy. Just come into my office at 10 o'clock at night on a Friday and I'll tell you. <laughs> that's a great quote <laughs> so that, that's it I've, i have been you know the name is charm offensive and that's what i've done i've embarked on a literal literal charm offensive of as many people as i can and uh, it pays off yeah so the other thing i've learned is just give away i learned this from josh who is in the runs the badass marketers and founders group which is just give away your best information and I try and give away as much as I can. The more I help people, the more I give away, and the more of my, myself, the more opportunities come my way. And work a lot. So give away yeah. and work, work a lot. Yeah, well, yeah, just um, make it as interesting and as useful as possible, and I help as many people as I can. Yeah. And the more I do that, uh, the, the better other people do, and then the better I do. Like, the, the more I help people, the more opportunities come my way. So um, obviously, I've got to sell stuff, but this equation seems to work you know i don't have to i don't have to spend on facebook ads or anything like that um instead i just put this work in and it, it's working out for me that's i think i believe that's the idea that gary varnachuk is pushing as well like give give content for free help give give and work yeah. a lot work a lot i believe I, all, all of their synonymous with that. Sorry? sorry you become synonymous with whatever you uh, sort of help people with. So I, I think the other thing that I had is that I found a sub niche. You know, I found a weird niche, which for me, it's yeah. kind of business and approaching, but I've added like a weird twist on it. No one else teaches it this way, where I'm like, be human, try and be as honest, be entertaining. And uh, so I own that. Now, anytime someone's funny on email, they're like, oh, you're doing the John Buchan thing, which is kind of <laughs> funny when I own that. I think people did it before me. And, uh, so that, that's worked well having a sub niche and I've got people's curiosity at the start with those screenshots where the responses where it says things like this is the best cold email I've ever received uh, I never reply to these I get a million of them this is the first one I've ever replied to those screenshots got people curious because I didn't show what I was sending for about a month or a month and a half so everyone was like what the hell is he sending to get these so that helped a lot as well but um, yeah it, it, the, the documenting and, and creating as much really good content and giving away your best definitely works you become synonymous with whatever you're talking about and um can we talk a bit about the methodology in itself because cold emailing is like there are many w things like i do it myself as well i believe you have to experiment you have to yeah. do it on scale but not too much like it, it's not it, it's not supposed to be a mailchimp campaign you have to personalize it use the data maybe outsource particular things and automatized, you know, like you cannot send one email by email that costs you like 20 minutes each. You want to have a scale, but the personal touch and learn from the data. So what, what is the methodology you use in that? What is, what's the idea? What's the main thing? Well, for me, I'll be honest with you, and let, let people get really annoyed at me when I say this, because I only personalize, for years, I only really personalized like the first name. Uh, and I just went on the fact that I could be captivating and make people laugh I would still get responses but yeah. obviously if you do add a la another layer of personalization it's going to be even more effective and that's kind of what I'm working on at the moment um, but my methodology is really I want to 
get their attention in the first line and get them to uh, either smile or laugh or just get, you know, get a reaction. And then you win someone's attention. And if you, if, if you made them smile or made them laugh, you can put a little pitch in next. You know, you, you've got, it's kind of like a, a grace period where now, okay, now it's okay to pitch. You've made someone smile. They'll, they'll probably read the next line. And then I'll get their attention again once I've pitched with something else that's a little bit funny or it's going to make them smile. So you're just constantly winning people's attention. And when you win someone's attention, you get a reaction out of them, a positive one. You're allowed to pitch. And that's really, I, I didn't realize it, but in copywriting, because I haven't really, I haven't trained any in copywriting at all. I'm not, it's not yeah. my area. It's not what I call myself. Um, I think they call it a pattern interrupt. So I've said it's a humor interrupt and it's the best kind of pattern interrupt in the world. You're literally giving someone a good feeling. And so that's one of the things. And, and just being creative, like they don't have to, B2B doesn't have to mean boring to boring. And <laughs> so, we forget that uh, people say to me like oh that's all well and good like i get objections like that's all well and good for you in marketing but i bet that doesn't work on ceos or senior it people or luxury brands or whatever it is and it's almost like people think that say someone becomes the ceo of red bull they don't then go oh i'm, I'm there the ceo of red bull i don't like to laugh anymore it, you know it's not <laughs> it doesn't happen you can't pigeonhole people like that and so it's not going to work on everyone but it's works on enough people that it's effective and there's all sorts of other things that you can do like obviously understanding all the you know the classic things understanding a client's pain points um uh, segmenting so you know who your ideal client is and you can help them um but really the, the thing that i add is uh, I, I just make those those approaches interesting so you're going to be remembered because otherwise everyone just writes the same short cold emails that get to the point they tick the boxes but you if, if someone's got a hundred of those in their inbox, why are they going to look at yours? This is a way of standing out from the pack. So using, using humor, putting people to smile and making it not boring to boring. <laughs> yeah. Disarming candor, I think is the, the, the phrase. And that's what it is. It's, it's disarming because when people get sales messages, yeah. um, you know, the, the, the alarm bell, you know, the, the walls are up that, you know, they're, they're going to be suspicious. Whereas if you make someone laugh and you're really honest about your intentions, it takes that away. So one, I used to start an email with something like, uh, greetings, first name. You've never heard of me. Hi, I'm John. I got your data from a list. Guess. <laughs> okay, at least you're list worthy. That's got to be worth something, right? And who starts an email with that? It's the most honest thing I could say. Rather than like not saying anything beating around the bush, I just brought it up and I complimented them that they should be proud that they've made it onto a list. Uh, it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> you should be proud to be on my list. <laughs> Never looked at it that way before. <laughs> and then the next line, you know, let me get down to brass tacks. And so that was the first email that I uh, wrote. And I just thought, I, I don't remember a lot because I was drunk. But uh, I remember when I was putting it together, I thought, because I would get cold emails myself uh, offering marketing services, which is what I was offering. So I knew what everyone else was sending. And I thought, what is the complete opposite of that that I can send? And uh, yeah, I wish I had a tale of woe where I tested and trialed stuff. And it was like, no, the first one I wrote was magic. And uh, I've, I've experimented and sort of reverse engineered it since. Right. So did you start now a wave of humor in B2B sales through the community? Because you kind of influence the people with your thinking and they do it for many people, right? Like how many people got now more humor, more laughs because of your input? That would be, that would be, uh, if I changed the world in any way, it would be good to <laughs> business communication more fun. <laughs> that's not a bad, that's not a bad thing to have done. Um, I, uh, let's talk a bit about live video and, uh, the way the media is evolving because I know you do a lot of facebook live and also you share live content do where do you see like email is just one of the tools where do you see email compared to other newer media like live video and it can it be combined as well yeah i'm new to uh going live and doing video so i'm trying to get better at it but uh, the media type doesn't matter it's it's the, the principles are going to be the same from News, you know, having a good newspaper ad or radio ad compared, or email or being on a podcast or a live video, 
if you can stand out and have something unique to say and you can be interesting, um, that's going to work throughout. But I, I love the live videos. It's like, it, it, it's a great way of being able to engage with people and uh, people start reading your words and your voice. And it, it, you know, it's a really, a really good thing for building trust and I, I want to get better at it. I need to do more and more of them. There is more information hidden in the video. Like well, they say 80% what gesture, uh, like 70% gestures, 30%, yeah. 20% voice and only 5, 10% content. And yeah. text is only content. So, and I believe yeah. I met somebody who told me they wanted to reach like high CEOs and that what they would do, they would record a YouTube video where they would talk to this person they want to meet, upload it and get likes and then message this YouTube video to all the colleagues within the company. Yeah. And then the yeah. colleagues will forward it to the CEO. Yeah. What do you think of this kind of approaches combining video and... Yeah, yeah, it would work. It's, uh, it makes total sense. Um... That I've always said that uh, if you can get, you might not be able to get a call with someone. You can't force that to happen, uh, but you can make uh, people have a conversation about you. You can make all the people around that person have a conversation about you. And if you can do that, there's a reasonable chance you'll be able to get that person's attention. Um, so that should be the goal. How do I get the yeah, people thanks. closest to him or her to, to talk about you and have a conversation? And uh, then it's up to them to take it further, but you can definitely do the first one. And by doing a tactic like that, you can see that working. Because I, I believe you said at some point you will get the attention of um, Gary Vernichuk to talk. You yeah. were sure they will talk about you. You were not sure that you will be on the call. How, yeah, how, yeah, why, yeah. why is that? What's it that? It will happen. I've got, I've got several different uh, ways of making it happen. I've got like three or four different plans. Like if one doesn't work, I've got another one. If this yeah. doesn't work. So I've got, uh, it's not something I'm, di I'm working on right now, but I will, it will happen. Um, well, I can say that they'll have a conversation about me. I don't know if it'll go further than that, but <laughs> I can do the first bit. By when? By when? Um, we know. I'd say by the end, end of the year. Um, I'm not, I've got so much on, but it, it, it is something that I want to do. So I'd say by the end of the year. Okay, so let's, I know that we don't have much time, but maybe we can talk about the tools a bit as well. Sure. Like what's the, what do you use? Like what can you recommend for people? What do you think, where is the good start and what is more more professional? Do you use something like Yesware or reply.io? There's lots of good uh, software. So there's um, Quickmail, uh, Gmas, Mailshake, reply.io. They're, they're all good platforms. I try not to recommend specific ones, um, but th those are good. Also Sendy, uh, if you're doing like, you know, a lot of emails. Yeah. Uh, for getting contact details and things like hunter.io and tools like that. Uh, but one of the, one of the greatest tools, because I don't, a lot of the time now I don't, uh, I've been moving more onto doing LinkedIn uh, and with sales navigator, with the amount of searches you can do, the type of searches you can do with sales navigator now, you can really niche down and find, you know, the perfect people that you should message. So LinkedIn sales navigator is a really good tool. And uh, I use it, you know, every day. Yeah, I, I, I use LinkedIn in, with conjunction with MailHunter. And then you can really go for a niche, get their emails, yeah. and then you load them. And you can personalize, like, the personalization for me is, like, I research each one and put yeah. something there. Yeah. What? Do you yeah, do, you do something like that? I really like uh, LinkedIn. And I know I do a lot of stuff on just, like, invite, you know, sending an invitation and then following up with a message. And obviously, uh, you know, that can be super effective. So LinkedIn's great as well. And uh, the other thing that I really like is, it's not really talking about tools, but uh, direct mail, I still love. Like sending it something in the post is, again, it can't, people can't scroll away or click on another tab when they're looking at a letter or a postcard. And if you can get someone's attention by being a bit, doing something a bit unusual in the, in the, in the post, you yeah. can then follow up with an email that in the subject line mentions that mentioning the very weird thing that you've sent them in the subject line. <laughs> so it's, it's a really good, a really good uh, tactic to use. Direct mail and follow up with an email that in the subject line, they're immediately going to know who it is. Did, uh, did you try to do it on scale as well? Like, uh, yeah, I did it. I, which is what I used to do with my first email, like this, you know, the very first one that I, I, I spoke about. I decided like, how do I get my open rates up? Because I was getting 
you know, sort of, I wasn't even doing follow-ups at this time, so it was working so well. I would send one email, that's all I would, I didn't even send follow-ups. Uh, and I decided, oh, I'll, I'll send a letter in the post. Instead of this really silly attachment, I'll send a sticker with it on. And then uh, I'll send a follow-up email. It's also kind of funny that references what I've sent in the post. And that, that worked really, really well. And um, uh, obviously, uh, it, it's you know, a bit of work getting actually sending stuff out. I'm sure you can get companies to do that for you, but I did it you know, myself. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of satisfying when you see, see sales and you have to actually work a little bit for it. But definitely using uh, direct mail and following up is a great way to reach really hard to reach prospects. And if, if you've got people you really specifically want to meet, direct mail is great as well because you can send them something really tailored uh, that, you know, that's well thought out and that will get their attention. I will make here a note. I will try direct mail myself. Didn't do it yet. <laughs> but I know that some people specialize on that. They say yeah. direct mail works in our days because everybody wants an email. email. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's because you'd have less competition there. And it's, you know, you're literally physically taking up space rather than just being something digital. And it works really, really well. It's, uh, and postcards are great because they don't even have to open the letter. You know, it's, you can almost can't not re read it, you know, you have to read it. And if you do handwritten stuff, which you can get companies to do that, handwritten letters for you, uh, that really stands out even more because who's, who does that anymore? And, uh, you know, it, it gets people's attention. You're, you're immediately going to be remembered. Do, do you outsource, like you, you, um, you mentioned sometimes, like what is Charm Offensive today? Is there like more people involved and who are the partners? And do you outsource particular things or you want to outsource in the future? Like, you know, Tim Ferry style, Indians doing work for yeah. you? Yeah, it's me, uh, me and my brother. And um, uh, it's most, yeah, mostly freelancers and people, you know, we've got lots of outsourcing for the sort of uh, work that we don't want to do, basically. So we can focus on create, you know, creativity and strategy and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, my goal now is, is just to take more on of the right kind of clients that we can charge a premium for. We can do great, really great creative work that's going to get results. And uh, I don't want to just grow a big agency. I'd rather have a smaller agency that can charge more and do the re really great work. And by having a, a, a following, which sounds weird to say, uh, you're able to command higher fees. It's amazing what that does. You know, just uh, it, it's the best business decision I've made in a long time. I'm really great that I thought, you know, <laughs> it was a good idea to try it. <laughs> so this basically the reputation gives you the opportunity to raise the fees. Yeah, because people can that group's the best social proof ever because you know people are always posting their successes based on what I've advice I've given them or if it's someone I've coached. And that's, that's just the best kind of advertising. The more I help people, the more those posts go up. When people, uh, when I'm in a sales call with someone and it's from the group, it's completely different to one that's, that's cold. There's no posturing, like people already know they want to work with me. Uh, they already know I'm good. So all of that's sort of taken care of. And it's kind of an ironic situation. My whole shtick is cold pitching. But I looked at my CRM the other day and like 90% of my leads are inbound at the moment. So it's kind of a <laughs> kind of an ironic situation to be in, but I'm not I'm not complaining. You do outbound, but your leads are inbound. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I, for the last uh, two months, uh, the inbound stuff's dominating. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a weird thing. Um, obviously, I still do some, but I, yeah, I'm getting a lot of leads through the group, so it's kind of a funny situation. So, so your brand gets very valuable at now at this point but you still want to keep it small do you like what what are your goals where will you be in one two five years will you still never, be doing cold emailing or no no i never think about uh i never plan that far ahead like i just take things day by day my goal now is obviously i've got my course uh, that started enrollment uh, always be winning and uh i really want to sell more and more of that kind of stuff where i do the, the trainings and uh, I help people, you know, succeed. So that's, that's part, that part of the business I really want to grow. And I'll still do client stuff, but, uh, you know, I'd like it, I'd like this, the split to be diff different to it is now. Um, I, I want to have that. The main part of my business will be selling courses and products and trainings uh, and stuff like that. Uh, that's what I'm going to really push for. And it's going well so far. So I think... You know, for, for the recording, um, 
as a, as a nant, I think it would be good if you can recommend something like people joining the group or some blogs, articles. Where should people yeah. go or maybe also people to, to look for, to learn from? Um, well, yeah, obviously the Charm Offensive group. Uh, if you search for Charm Offensive on Facebook, that's a uh, join up there. There's loads of great information there. Um, uh, as far as books and things, I can tell you the ones that, that, that I like. There's one called Creative Mischief by Dave Trott. Okay. Uh, that's a great book. I think it's out of print at the moment, but it's, you can get it on Kindle still, but it's really, really good. That's a great book. Just on lateral thinking and creativity, and it's a, it's a really good book. And as far as um, uh, my other, my, actually my favorite nonfiction book is How to Win Friends, Influence People, which yeah. is a book from you know, the 30s. Know. That's a great book, and I should reread it. Uh, it's such a good book. Those two are great. Yeah, I believe there are nine principles. Generally, everybody can apply. Yeah. That's the basic for everything, I, I think. Human to yeah, human. Yeah. It's weird because it's uh, back then it was, you know, there's no like peer reviewed uh, tests or anything. It was all anecdotal, but it was super effective. And then if you read Influence by uh, Cialdini, uh, which is, you know, much more sort of science backed, yeah. um, but you still see some of the principles from How to Win Friends and Influence People are in that book. But it was just anecdotal back then. But it's a really, you know, it's a, it's a great book. Uh, but Influence is also a good book people should check out. The Psychology of Persuasion. Psychology of Disposure. The, uh, psycholo the Psychology of Persuasion. Persuasion. Yeah, yeah. I have to well, do a lot of reading myself. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good well. book.